successful in their first outing against Italy, but they'll know they need to step up again, and they do have a number of changes to their starting lineup. Kepu, Alexander, now Stephen Moore is out. Pull it to know the hooker from New South Wales, fills that void. At locks, James Horwell, the new captain, has had a fantastic start to his international uh, upgrade, you should say. We'll partner Dan Vickerman in the second row, and here's where the other change comes in. McCalman from Western Force, he replaces his teammate Pocock, will form a powerful combination with Samuel and Alsim, and into the heart, the brains, and the soul of this Australian team. Will Guinea, arguably the greatest player on the face of the planet right now, number nine, pairs up with the unpredictable, very talented Quay Cooper. Anthony Fainga'a and Pat McCabe form a solid combination in the midfield. And here's where things start getting interesting. Adam Ashley Cooper, Kirtley Bill, and James O'Connor. Very talented back three. So three changes from the team that took on Italy just a few days ago. A legendary uh, player for the Wallabies joins us in commentary. Mark Eller, what do you make of the changes? How will this, will this be a disruption for the team? Yeah, I think it will be a little bit uh, unsettling. Certainly, you know, Australia like to go into this game with their key players. And the late withdrawal of, uh, obviously, Pilot and uh, Stephen Moore, sorry, and, um, and uh, Pocock. David Pocock, you know, it leaves us... The combination is a little bit rusty, and uh, you know, there'll be a little bit, bit of concern going into this game. Well, time will tell to see whether this is an advantage for the Irish team. Who come into this tournament, Gavin Hastings, Scotland legend. But they haven't had the finest form coming into this uh, tournament, but I guess uh, oh, a good enough win uh, in their first game, their first outing against the USA, that they'll need, really need to step it up against this Australian team who've been hot. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's no doubt that they played four World Cup um, warm-up matches coming into this tournament, and that they lost a lot of them. They recovered that with that victory earlier on against the Americas, and then they've got this big game. They know if they win tonight that they're going to top the pool. It's a massive challenge for Ireland, but everyone that I've spoken to that wears the green of Ireland feels very, very confident that the players are up for this game. Well, we've seen the wares of some of the home nations team. England were able to beat Argentina. Wales went down by one point to South Africa. Brian O'Driscoll, been one of the premier players in World Rugby for so many years, more than likely making his last appearance at a Rugby World Cup and how he would love to go out on top of the world. As we have a look at the starting 15 for the Irish, Healy, Best and Ross. They'll have a big test taking on the front three of the Australian team. And two of the most experienced locks in the business. Donico Callahan at number four and Paul O'Connell, number five, playing 79, 76 tests respectively. And we go with the loose forward trio. Stephen Ferris, Sean O'Brien and Jamie Heaslip, who toured with Ireland last year to take on the New Zealand Māori. Owen Redden. Pairs up with Jonathan, Se Jonathan Sexton. Preferred option over the experienced Ronan Gogara in number 10. And this is a familiar sight for the men in green. Darcy and O'Driscoll. 120 tests for Brian O'Driscoll. Fantastic plan ambassador for Rugby Union. And then the back three, Earls. Carney in number 15. And the explosive Tommy Bow. Round out a very capable back three for Ireland. So that those are the starting 15 teams for tonight's Big Clash. Stick around. Kickoff will be right after the break. Paul C, it doesn't get any bigger than this. Ireland taking on Australia. Game number 16 of Rugby World Cup 2011. And it is a matchup 
that holds a lot of bearing not only on the outcome of Pool C but also possible positions we get to the knockout stage of the game. Mark Gallagher, this is your first call with us. It is an absolute pleasure to have you on Māori Television as we look at the Australian lineup. And again, the two big changes coming into today's match. Polota now slots in for Stephen Moore at number two. And the McCalman, normally at number eight, fills a massive void left by David Pocock, one of the best open side flankers in the world. Then we have a look at Ireland at full strength. Brian O'Driscoll will lead his country for the 121st time on the field. He's captain forming a formidable partnership with Darcy. You see regular names, O'Connell, O'Callaghan. What a very experienced Irish team that know the importance of this game. Also changes on the Australian bench. Zaya Faingaa comes in at number 16, will be the backup hooker. And Wycliffe Polly, who's had a lot of injuries to deal with this year, the New South Wales uh, Waratahs, number eight. When fit and able, he's a handful, he'll come off the bench. You see the colour, the festivity of this Rugby World Cup. Looks as though there's an even split of Irish and Australian supporters here at Eden Park, and it is a capacity as we await National Anthem. that have made the trip here to support their team. Now, Mark Allen, we've talked about, I guess, the mechanics and the changes that have happened in the uh, board pack for Australia, but no doubt the key is unleashing this high-octane attack that they have in the back line. Yeah, you're right, but first they've got to just do the, what you do in all test matches. You've got to take it up. Um, in the earlier test matches throughout the year, the, the Wallabies were too lateral. They let the ball go too quickly. You've got to do the hard work. You've got to... Give your forwards. The forwards have got to build the, the platform early before it goes wide. And I think that'll be the key to the game. I think towards the back end, particularly the last 20 minutes, hopefully uh, the young Australians will have too much speed to, uh, to, I guess, burn Ireland off the park. 
Well, I guess that's the idea from the Australian perspective, but having a look at Ireland, look, they don't have a flash record against Australia at Rugby World Cups. They've played them four times. They've never beaten them. They've come very close, though. Are they capable of an upset tonight? Well, I think all the Irish people in the crowd, Te, te Arahi, will, uh, will say yes, and there's huge anticipation here. You know, if a game was won in the warm-up, my goodness, the Irish just worked so hard in the, in the warm-up. They were really banging into each other. And I just feel this opening 20 minutes is going to be some contest. And it's up to Australia just to stem the, the tide, just cool heads on these young shoulders, and then just uh, absorb all that pressure and go down and score. It's going to be a fascinating opening quarter. Can't wait. Yeah, Ireland, well, they haven't had the luck of the Irish when they come up against Australia four times. They've lost all four occasions. However, on two of those matches, they lost by just one point. So there's been a lot of positivity coming out of the Irish camp. Even though form hasn't really been on their side, they're up for a big one, and they'll need to be up for it. Currently, Bill, number 15. Not your traditional man, just to wait at the back and clean everything up. Likes to get in first receiver, sharing the responsibility with Quade Cooper. Eden Park. And it is a beautiful sight, 60,000 packed capacity. It was only eight days ago when this whole crazy thing with the Rugby World Cup all started. And it is really in full swing. Referee Bryce Lawrence is in charge of tonight's match. Here we go, game number 16 of Rugby World Cup 2011 is underway, Australia versus Ireland. And straight away it looks as though that Ireland possibility of mistake, that's correct. Caught the ball, just stepped just out, number me, 11, mate. Keith Please. Earls. Just holding. Yeah, that was a poor holding. mistake there. I holding. think um, whoever was behind him, Tommy Bo, I think it was, he should have let called. That ball was going out. Advantage Australia. First line out of the match. It's a big jumper. Rocky Elsom at the back. Pat McKay crashes more. into the line. No doubt more. we'll see that a few times tonight. We've got a more. It's Australia. 15 metres out from the line. I think the Wallabies are a little bit disappointed with, with that. Oh, you're telling we're talking about the warm up there, Gavin. These boys are on a rip in. It's only been one minute. Well, I have to say that there was tremendous tackling there. They all got on. And the key thing was that they kept the Australians up on the ground. They couldn't get to ground and feed that ball. And then a little bit of fisticuffs. Bill McLaren, the legendary Scottish commentator, used to call it a wee bit of bargey bargey. <laughs> And attacking play here by Ireland. Spin the ball out to the right. Tommy Bow puts the kick in behind the line. Interesting play, I guess. The Irish looking to fight fire with fire, not settling for the kick. Now it was great play by Sexton. He saw, he saw the Wallabies just walking back. They had their backs turned, took the advantage, and played the ball to the right and made, what, 50 metres. Great play. Down. Down. Come on. You can hear the atmosphere. You feel as though you're in Dublin half the time. All the crowd cheering, really getting behind their teams. McCabe, balls kicked through. O'Callaghan's giving chase. Adam Ashley Cooper. 22. There to clean up the mess. Oh, the Irish come out. They're firing up. You mentioned the word mess. That's what, what Ireland like to do. They like to create chaos around the forwards. Just get in and swarm like bees around honey. And this is what they want to just impose themselves over the Australians. It reminds me of Māori Television Kitchen when it's hung on Friday <laughs> once a month and everybody's in. It's a big fist fight. Great take there. The experienced Gordon Darcy, number 12. They'll go to the short side. O'Driscoll unable to pick up the ball. It's knocked back. Ken Healy. Nice ball forward, number 7. Sean O'Brien, watch out for him. He's exploded on the scene. Relative newcomer at international level, only playing this 12th test. Paul 
O'Connor. Very familiar sight. An orange jersey. Ball goes to ground. Heisler picks it up. Fainga around the ankles. Counter comes on. Possible turnover here for Australia. They've done a fantastic job. Kenya 